My daughter, Cassie, was 29. One month before the incident, Cassie received a Facebook request from an old high school friend, Nathan Parsons. Cassie and Nathan dated for about a year. And then they didn't talk to each other for 10 years. Even though Cassie knew that Nathan was nice, she wasn't interested in, in a relationship with him. Unfortunately, Nathan felt differently. After Cassie rejected him, Nathan became obsessive with her. She wasn't answering his texts. She wasn't answering his phone calls, wasn't calling him back. Nathan acted like, if Cassie's not going to answer me, I'm just going to go where Cassie's at. According to witnesses, he struck Miss Crawford and then grabbed her and drug her and threw her into the back of this pickup truck. Nathan Parsons was an incredibly dangerous man. He just murdered his stepfather just hours prior to kidnapping Cassie. He strangled to death his stepfather and disposed of his body, then took his belongings to purchase heroin. The situation wasn't going to end well for Cassie. We feared that it would be a murder-suicide. How long have you been in the truck driving? Can you tell? About five, 10 minutes. Hey, honey, where do you think he might go in Adams? Do you have a clue? No, I don't think he knows anybody in Adams County. I don't know what he's doing. Please, I need help. When her cell phone disconnected, I didn't know if it was because Cassie was in a bad cell phone range or if Nathan had harmed her. The moment the call was lost, we lost the GPS coordinates. So at that point, we didn't know what way they were going. 
I don't have an address. Okay, honey, what? Look around. What do you see around you right now? I'm in the back of a truck. I am not as down. I can't see anything. I'm in pure darkness. And you're Kathy, right? Kathy, yes. Okay. Okay. It's all right. We're gonna find you. Okay. Just keep that phone open. Okay. Even if you can't talk to me, sweetheart, just leave it open. All right. I'm tracking your cell phone. Okay. Go ahead. I've reported a possible kidnapping around the Winchester area, Winchester and Cross Street, 136 and Cross Street. Can you head that way? Okay. I'm on 73, but we root from there. Adams County is exceptionally rural. There are multiple small side roads that are heavily wooded. We're on a gravel road. You can tell it's gravel? Yes. OK. She can tell they've turned on gravel. I'm waiting for the refit to go through. Hey, listen to me. If he stops, I want you to leave that phone open. Just flip it on in your pocket or something. Just keep the call on. The rebit's still showing her on 136, just north of Matthias. I don't know what he could have turned on. She just knows that it suddenly turned to gravel. I think we turned right and it's still gravel. Okay, stay real still and quiet for just a second, Kathy, till we know what he's gonna do, okay? He couldn't live without her. And we believed that he was going to kill her as well as himself. Anytime you see someone kidnapped, you know you're working with a person that looks at situations differently than society does. And you have to approach that situation with severe caution. As long as you've got that phone open on an active call, Kathy, I can keep tracking it, OK? OK. Please help me. <laughs> I don't want to die. Oh, my God. Kathy? Kathy? The police were on the way, but it was difficult because he was a moving target. Road now, vehicles approaching right at us. Okay, 839. 
turned down the gravel road, I thought we were going to some abandoned house and I'm never going to be seen again. It was like my life flashed before my eyes. Cassie did everything right on the call. Her ability to stay calm helped us to get help to her faster. 15 years on the highway patrol, this by far was the most intense stressful situation I've ever been involved with. Looking back on that day, I try to figure out what I could have done differently, but there isn't anything. I'm just so lucky to be alive.